And if you guys can take your shirts off too, so you can really see. Like I don't in the clinic because I don't need to see because I've been doing this for like 17 years. Okay, so I can feel for the borders of a scapula and you can see this side is lower and this side is higher. You can kind of see that up here also. So he already has scapular malposition, the first one, right, on our S of the sixth scapula. Okay, you can, other than assessing for height, you can assess for distance from the spine. So like, I'll literally, like I'll, I can be like this. You could measure it with the tape measure too, but he's pretty even in terms of the position, like we'll say abduction from the spine. That's an, there's an actual special test that's lateral scapular slide, where you'll see some people that it's over here and you can measure the distance. And that's a positive test just by observation, lateral scapular slide. And that correlates to scapular weakness big time. It may have implications for some pectoral tightness also because it's really pulling them that way. But so he already has, okay, the first S is positive. He doesn't have, well, kind of get in here. I don't see any like major inferior medial scapular winging, but sometimes I'll kind of see, can I get my fingers under there? And I can get my finger under here easier. So we could maybe say this is some very, very mild scapular winging, just because I can really get under there, okay? And then we can look at scapular dyskinesia. Does he have that? So try raising both arms into shoulder flexion. And we just kind of want to look, right? And he has symptoms on both sides in different locations. And down, okay, and again, and down. Things don't really look very symmetrical, but he was malpositioned. You can go into shoulder abduction. That looks a bit more symmetrical to me. Good, try flexion again. Things definitely look different, one side versus the other, going into this position. So I think we could definitely say he has some scapular dyskinesia because it's not a symmetrical appearance of how things are moving. And then if you come around the other way, and then you feel, do they have coracoid pain? Any tenderness? Yeah, very little. Okay. Any tenderness? I mean, it's not painful. Yeah. Just, some I feel you pressing it. Yeah. So. Like some people, ah, okay, you'll know if it's tender. I think it's about the same on both sides. Yeah. Maybe this side more. I think so too. It feels like there's more tone under my fingers. Like I can get in there easy. And there's more restriction. So in the clinic, if you're ever doubtful, but they say it's tender, you could count that as coracoid pain. But most people are gonna be like, right? Don't touch me there. Why, why does that hurt? Well, let's lay you down and oh, your pec mi minor is positive. Muscle length test or your pec major or both. Okay, so those are kind of the things you're looking for with the six scapula. And a lot of those people, you're gonna to wanna to work on mobility for the pec, likely the pec minor, maybe also the pec major. You're gonna to wanna to look at strength through the periscapular region. Middle trap, lower trap, rhomboids, serratus anterior, lat, okay? All right, so do more of the observation of all of that, thank you. We had someone who wanted to be a subscapulist. You want him? Sure. Okay. <laughs>